Welcome to Cimarron Valley Church. Today's message is titled, Of Life and Death. It covers 1 Corinthians 15, 20 through 24. Here's Pastor Paul with the message. I landed on this passage of scripture in my devotion time, and when I did, uh, something new. I was, I always like to find things new um, in scripture. It's not that they're new, they've always been there, you realize. They didn't just get put in there today or this week or last month. They've been in there, but many times we skip over them or we miss them. And then when we get into a maybe a more quieter uh, time or maybe a time of searching in our own heart, we see things that we haven't seen before. They become revealed to us that this is what we need to know. So uh, knowing that, I'd like for you, if you have your scripture and you want to turn and read with me, I'll be reading from the New King James Version today. The passage will be up on the the, uh, screen uh, for those that need it. But I will be in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I want to begin the reading today at verse 20, just a few verses. So those of you who are able, if you'd stand with me for the reading of the word today. And this is the writing of Paul to the Corinthian church. The Corinthian church was a very troubled church. And Paul wrote exactly two letters that we know of and possibly a third in the readings that we have from 1st and 2nd Corinthians. There is reference to another letter that was written to the Corinthian church. But now he's coming to the end of his first letter, and in verse 20 he pins these words, But now Christ is risen from the dead, and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. And that would be who? Those who have passed on. For since by man came death, By man, proper name now, meaning Christ, also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward, those who are Christ at his coming. Verse 24, then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and all power of life and death. It's just that simple. And Paul was writing in simplicity when he's talking about life and death. Would you pray with me this morning? Father, we honor you today for who you are. We thank you for this time that we could come together, worship your name and sing praises to you together. When you hear the music being played, it brings calmness and comfort to our hearts. When we can take time away from our lives and the busyness of them, and all the turmoil and struggle that some of us face, and we can just come into your presence and find comfort, and relax in your presence and hear from you. Our hearts are heavy today. They are heavy for Nita and family, for Shauna, they are heavy today, for Ann Sadler, and for David, and for Ralph, and for Pat. Lord, that you would minister to all of these today. We know that you have a plan, a will, and a purpose. So we ask, O God, that your plan be accomplished in the mighty name of Christ. And then we stand before you today, Lord, and we ask that you would give us ears to hear, hearts to receive, minds to understand the preaching of your word, and that your word would speak to all of our hearts today. For this life and death is truly an important part of all of our lives. Guide us, O Lord, today, I pray. 
And let the words of this mouth and the meditation of this heart be acceptable in your sight, in Christ's name. Amen. 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 You can be seated. Thank you so much. Of life and death. <clears throat> a little background of this scripture helps to understand it just a little bit, a little bit better. Throughout the 15th chapter, Paul is talking to the Corinthian church about the resurrection of Christ because there were those in his day that were going around saying there's no such thing as a resurrection. It cannot happen. Once a person dies, uh, they're gone forever. They're never to be seen or heard or spoken of again. They didn't believe in the resurrection. And Paul had said to them that uh, he had preached, in fact, to them and talked to them about resurrection. In fact, in verses 3 and 4, he said, I, I just delivered to you a very simple gospel. I'll read the passage that he wrote. He said, I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received. So Paul said, I received this message, and that is that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures and then he goes on to say and he was seen by many people peter who was leader of the church at that time all the the uh, disciples who now the apostles uh, paul saying of some 500 witnesses some are still with us some have passed on but we know that he rose from the dead because we have actual eye contact witness that jesus after he was taken from the cross, placed in a cold tomb, actually rose on the third day and stood among us. Paul even went on to say, and we saw him ascend into heaven. It's a, it's a fact. We have evidence of these things that the resurrection did take place. It's not a problem for us, Paul says. So he's in direct conflict with some teachers who were coming into the church and teaching that there's no such thing as a resurrection. And so that in, in further passage of the, the same chapter, 15, he goes on to say, well, if Christ didn't raise from the dead, then why are we preaching? And why are you assembling together? Why are you praying? Why do you have faith? Why do you believe in grace? Why, why do you believe in anything? If Christ didn't raise from the dead, he said, those also who have fallen asleep in Christ, they have perished and they, it means nothing. Wouldn't that be a hopeless world? Why even have funerals? Why talk about the dead? If there's no resurrection, Paul says. In fact, he goes further to say in verse 19 of this chapter, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, in other words, while we live, if that's all we've got, we are of all men the most pitiful. We don't have anything beyond. And then he begins in the passage of Scripture that I read to you this morning. And he points out at least three things in those four verses that I want to share with you quickly this morning that are relevant, rele, relevant about life and death because of the resurrection. <clears throat> and the first thing that he points out to us is the origin of life and the origin of death. We have to go all the way back to the garden to find the origin of death. You recall the story, you've heard it since you were in Sunday school. The story about the serpent who weaved his way through the tree and you've seen the pictures, the animated pictures and, and the, uh, the uh, painted pictures of, of Eve standing in the garden beneath the tree and the serpent speaking to her from the tree and usually there's an apple. You ever notice that? You see, it's an apple that shows. We don't know what the fruit was, but we do know that it was a, a fruit of the tree of life. And the serpent said something to her. The, the knowledge of good and evil, I should have said. The, the serpent said to her, he said, she, because she said to him, if we eat of this, we will die. Now, she's giving you a lot of information in that statement. She said that if we eat of this fruit, we will die. Which goes w this way with me. So if I don't eat the fruit, I will 
It's just that simple. If I eat this fruit, I will die. But if I don't eat this fruit, I will live. Can you imagine? Eve could still be among us. It's quite possible had she not eaten of the fruit. But when she took part of the fruit and then passed it along to Adam, and Adam took of the fruit, Paul is saying now in the book of Corinthians, he, he is now saying that this brought death to man. This is the cause of death. We despise death, don't we? When a loved one passes, we are hurt. We grieve, don't we? We despise death. We don't want death to come. There are people in our lives that we want to live forever. Amen? My father passed in 2020. I didn't want him to die. I wanted him to always be with me. I may be 64 years old, but I still need my daddy. I want him. I've had friends that passed. Friends right here in this church, Jack Creeler. Fred Carnes, Ron Thompson, Martha Newport, just to name a few. Louis Brower, friends. I would that they were still with me, wouldn't you? But because of death, there comes this separation and they are no longer with us. They aren't here anymore. So because Adam and Eve took of the fruit, death did come. She did give us a truth. And that truth was that this life, this body will give up. It will soon wear out. And there's a lot of us in here that are true evidence and witnesses that it gives out. Amen. I watched a pack of athletes yesterday on football fields and basketball courts. I even went on YouTube last evening and watched a few wrestling matches. For those of you that don't know, I was a wrestler in high school. And I have a grandson. Uh, let me brag now. I have a grandson that was junior high champion and wrestler of the year at his school. So quite proud. And I see these athletes. I saw an athlete jump all the way over the head of another athlete in a ball game the other night. I can't even attempt <laughs> to go over the coffee table in my living room. <laughs> Why? Because death is taking its toll day by day. Because they failed in the garden, death did come. And it's not like I've laid down and gave it all up yet. I still creak around. Trust me, what is happening? The body is dying, folks. That's what's happening. I looked at those athletes, who oh, you know, buffed out, who you know, look like hawks. And I'm thinking, I used to look like that? Not really. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, I used to look like a Greek god. Now I look like a Greek. <laughs> That's the origin of death. But Paul said, because this man died, or this one man brought death, this man, Christ, he brought life. And he is the origin of life. Let me say something, folks. If Christ didn't raise from the dead, we just well pack up all the hymn books, all the Bibles, and go home and live a miserable, pitiful life. But I'm here to declare to you this morning that Jesus did raise from the dead. I have a personal experience with them.
See, I can't do it in writing, but I can tell you from my heart that I know he is alive, that I know he has done something in my life. I can tell you that at one day I was a vile sinner. I spoke words that were unkind and vile, but because Christ came into my life and completely changed me, that's the experience. You will never convince me he didn't raise from the dead. And I wasn't there when he did it. But I still believe it 2,000 years later. I believe it not just as a historical fact, but an experiential fact. I have experienced Christ and his life in my life resurrected. That's the origin of life and death. But he also says to us that there is an order. He says in verse 23, each one in his own order, colon. Did you read that? He says this, Christ the first fruits, afterward those who are Christ at his coming. I've already explained to you that because of Adam, the natural body dies. And sin brought separation and death to each one of us. There was a moment in time when we were separated from God. We, we were miserable. We didn't understand all things. But when we came to a place of understanding that Jesus did die for my sins and that I am a sinner and that he resurrected from the dead to give me life, we had this experience with him. That was the order that we had. Now, this death, we witness that daily, do we not? Pick up the Perkins Journal every Thursday, and you read. And I've noticed this as I've gotten older. 64 is not old. Amen. I see people even younger than me, and then people about my age. And 10 years beyond 64 is not old. No. Why do I say that to myself when at 20 I thought if you were 60, you were ancient? <laughs> and that you probably were going to die just any day. Why did I believe that? Because I was young and vile and, and, and full of vitality and I, I had the world by the tail and I could do anything and I was invincible, right? I could actually leap over a coffee table and not hear my knee crack. <laughs> yeah, but life goes on and I realize that this natural body is deteriorating, but there is an order here. Because of the resurrection, I have hope. That's what the scripture tells me. Let me read for you. <clears throat> In verses 51 and 52 of this same chapter because the Bible tells me something that is going to happen do you want to know about a mystery yes. okay the Bible gives us this it says Paul says here's one of the mysteries of life he says behold I tell you a mystery oh we love that don't we you ready for what he's going to tell you here's what he says we shall not all sleep What's he talking about? Death. There's an order here. He said, we'll not all sleep. But what will happen? Oh, you, you should jump up. No matter how old you, you are when I read this. We shall all be changed. Woohoo! I won't be like this forever. We shall all be changed. Oh, and listen. Does it tell me to go on uh, a diet? Doesn't tell, I don't have to contact Golo or what's that other one where I don't eat carbohydrates? Huh? Keto. 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 Oh, forget keto. I don't need it. Huh? No more starvation diets. You want me to tell you why? I read it in the scripture. We will all be changed. Hyphen. In a moment. <laughs> Woo. I'm happy now. I will be changed in a moment. That's the order that God has ordered for us. In a moment, 
in the twinkling of an eye. Just that quick. Whoo. Ought to be 18 again. But wait, he gives something else. At the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Now, how's that going to happen? Remember, he said Christ is the first fruits. The first fruits of what? Resurrection. Because Jesus rose from the dead, so will you and I. That's the promise. Remember, because in Adam, all die. But because of Christ, all are made alive, changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, resurrected from the dead. Which brings me to the last point today, and that is the outcome of life and death. Read, read with me again this text in verse 24. Paul said, then comes the end. When he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and all power. A lot is being said in that little sentence of scripture. And it is this. Ultimately, God is in control. That's what it's telling you. Because when the end comes, when the dust clears, huh? When, when, when it settles and it's clear, you know who's still standing? Jesus Christ, the righteous. That's who's still there because he puts an end to everything that's going on in this world. You know the news media that you hear every morning when you get up? And they just give you more stuff that you really don't want to hear and frustrates you and angers you and disgusts you throughout the day. Huh? When you see on living tape and video things that are happening in our world, violence and rioting, stealing and looting, all these things that we see, and we say to ourselves, what? Who's going to do something about this? Isn't that what we ask? Huh? We got, what, four or five states that we're not really clear that the election was even fair in those. And we got videotape and we've got evidence and we have witnesses. And what do we ask ourselves? Who's going to do something about this? And then we have people who are in power stand up on TV in front of the whole world and nation and the whole world and tell us nothing happened. You guys are just stupid. Right? Well, listen. It may not happen now, but the Bible says that when he comes, he puts an end to all rule, all authority, and all power. That's my hope. I'm not looking to it here. I realize men will fail me here. There are times I even fail myself. But... I know that he is in control and that he's got everything in his hand and everything's going to work out just like he wants it to work out. You say, Pastor, how can you be so sure? I'm so glad you asked. Let me read a passage of scripture for you. Revelation chapter number 11 and verse 15. Remember, he said it'll happen at the last trump. Now, we sang a song this morning. You remember what it was? It is what with my soul? It is well with my soul, we said. We said the clouds will roll back like a scroll. Isn't that what we sang? And then we said the trump shall resound. Isn't that what we sang? Well, do you believe what you sang? Well, it's scriptural. It's found right here in Revelation chapter 11. Then the seventh, which is the last trumpet, the last, uh, the seventh trumpet that sounds, it says the seventh angel sounded and there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. And the 24 elders who sat before God on their thrones fell on their faces and worshiped God, saying, 
We give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, the one who is and was and who is to come. Hallelujah. Because you have taken your great power and reigned. The nations were angry. Think on these words. And your wrath has come. The time of the dead that they should be judged and that you should reward your servants, the prophets and the saints and those who feel your, fear your name, small and great, and should destroy those who destroy the earth. Then the temple of God was opened in heaven and the ark of his covenant. How many movies have been made about where is the ark of the covenant? It tells you right here in Revelation. Does it not? It says, the temple of God was opened in heaven and the ark of his covenant. See, just another mystery was seen in his temple. Huh? Raiders of the lost ark. <laughs> Snakes and all kinds of other stuff down in caves and going. It tells you right here. And there was lightnings and noises, thunderings and earthquake and great hail. See, the outcome of everything is finally God is in control. He is in control today. And when, it, when the smoke clears and the dust settles, he's still in control. He's the only one left standing. At the last trump, which shall resound, we will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. I can't give you all the details about everything that happens. I just know that my faith reaches out to those words and says that there is resurrection from the dead. Number one, because Christ is the first fruit of resurrection. So therefore, I have a hope of resurrection. The Bible tells me of the saints of God that he uh, led captive captive out of captivity when he rose from the dead. In fact, there's even scriptural evidence that the dead was walking in the streets of Jerusalem. The graves had opened. Resurrection power is still here, my friend. It's simple, life and death. We die because of Adam. We live because of Christ. Without Christ, the Adamic nature still rules. But with Christ, we have resurrection power. We have hope beyond this life. This body, this body is not the one that I'm going through eternity with. Thank God. And you should thank him too. Jerry Sadler has been put together like you wouldn't believe. And even he's going to get a newer body than what he has right now. He's got two knees, two hips, two shoulders. Am I right? Yeah. And one day his face was crushed like a pancake and look at him now. Well, he's doing the best he can. But, <laughs> but really changed in a moment, a new body resurrected incorruptible is what the Bible tells us. This mortal shall put on immortality. That's life and death. My friend, death is not the end. Death is a step across the river. And then I am waiting for the resurrection power of Christ to enter the new body and bring me back with him when he comes back to rule and to reign. And you know what? Not just me, not just the Apostle Paul who wrote these words for us or John the Revelator who wrote these words, but for every one of us, this promise is true. We can have life, resurrection life, because of Jesus. Now, I thank you today for your word, the truth of your word. I pray that you'll take these few meager words that we have spoken today and all their human frailty and that you'll just touch our hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit, that resurrection power, that we would all experience this great salvation and that we would all experience this spiritual life that we can have and live, that our hearts would truly be touched. Maybe we've come here today with struggles and issues and problems in our lives, not knowing what to do. All of our planning seems to come to nothing. Let us today just yield to the Holy Spirit and allow you to do the work in our lives because we are your children. 
Because we are your children, O oh Lord, we know that resurrection power exists with us because of the presence of the Holy Spirit within us, because you declared in the scripture that we read today that you would bring us at your coming, that we would be with you. The outcome was clear. I pray that you'll help us in our hearts today. In Jesus' name, amen.